In 2010, F1 teams figured out a way to use the exhaust gases to make their cars faster. And as a welcome byproduct, it made them sound like this. But how did moving the exhaust position gain them so much performance? And why were drivers completing entire laps at full throttle? Well, let's get into it. Following the 2010 season, the controversial double diffuser was banned. This left the teams with a rear downforce deficit and a problem to solve over the winter. But little did they know that one team had already found a solution. They had moved their exhaust outlets to create better airflow around the diffuser. This was not a new solution. F1 had used it in the 80s and the 90s, but what this team did was make it way, way better. And soon everyone would have to follow them or be left behind. But how exactly did it work? The foundation of a Formula 1 car's speed is from downforce. This effect happens when air flows around the car very quickly. The car affects the air going over it in such a way that it creates a lower pressure of air underneath the car than above. This difference in pressure creates a suction effect, and this is called downforce. If the car is driving quicker, the air flows over it quicker, and you get even more downforce. And this is what F1 engineers are always trying to do. And the focal point for this air at the rear of the car is the diffuser. The diffuser expands the airflow and as it expands it accelerates the airflow under the floor which creates low pressure which in turn creates downforce. But there is a problem here and it's coincidentally one of my favorite motorsport phrases, tire squirt. Here's Scarbs to explain. So if you could imagine that tire being pushed through the air, all of the air is trying to part around the tire. Now the air that parts around the inside of the tire goes sideways towards the center line of the car and can go into the diffuser and really upset the diffuser's performance. So basically, tire squirt equals bad. Remember that for later in the video. What the geniuses at Red Bull decided to do was move the exhaust outlets, which produces high energy, fast flowing air onto the top of the floor and aimed it between the tire and the diffuser. They found that this high energy air would flow along the floor and pull other air along with it. That's the cool thing about flow. High energy air drags surrounding flow with it. This means that the high energy exhaust gases pulled more air through the diffuser. Faster flowing air meant lower pressure under the diffuser, which meant more downforce. And more downforce equals good. This exhaust airflow has another benefit. So we have to return to tire squirt for just a second. The high energy airflow would actually drag the tire squirt away with it and redirect it, acting like a sort of barrier along the side of the car. This meant that the diffuser went unaffected and could do its best work. However, there was one small problem. This exhaust trick would only work when the driver was on the throttle. Imagine you're braking into turn one at Monza. You need as much rear downforce as you can to slow the car better. But of course, you don't want to press the throttle as well. You would obviously just go straight on past the corner. And this is where the engineers really earn their money. They came up with two solutions that would mean they could get the benefits of the exhaust trick even when the driver wasn't pressing the throttle pedal. Their solutions were called cold and hot blowing. And here's Scarbs to explain these absolutely genius techniques. As you come into the corner and you would lift off the throttle, in terms of the throttle pedal, the actual throttles on the engine would stay open, but you would get the reduction in engine performance by reducing the fuel injection and the ignition to get the deceleration that you want. But the engine's still spinning and the throttles are wide open, so you're still getting airflow passing through the engine and coming out through the exhausts. Now, of course, that has had no ignition to the uh, airflow passing through the engines. That's why they call it cold blowing. And it is relatively effective in terms of just managing a bit of on-off throttle pedal, but it doesn't really provide you with uh, a complete replacement of the full-blown effect. And as you can imagine, the teams wanted this full-blown effect. And this is where the other technique comes in. What the teams did was make the engine run deliberately inefficiently. This was called hot blowing. It's very much like an anti-lag system. So you come into your corner, you lift off the throttle pedal, and again, the throttles will stay open. But in this situation, you still have fuel injecting into the combustion chambers, but it's not um, ignited in the combustion chamber. You retard the ignition, and the ignition happens very late when the exhaust valve is open, and the combustion goes straight down the exhaust pipe like a rocket. So you effectively have fuel burning in the exhaust pipe like an afterburning, blowing hot exhaust gases out of the exhaust, even when you're at your complete off-throttle, slowest position 
apex going around a corner. This hot blowing was really genius. If you could get it working well, and like Ferrari, you could get the full blown diffuser effect all the way around the corner, and it gave the drivers great confidence at low speed. It was as if they were going at much higher speeds, which as we know means more downforce. These blown diffusers also gave those cars their iconic rasping sound, one that I personally used to love. Again, listen to this. That's just the best. Now, like every good innovation in F1, of course, the FIA found a way to ban it. They weren't particularly happy with the teams deliberately using excess fuel to create more downforce. They wanted downforce to be produced by the cars driving through the air, not by burning fuel. I call them buzzkills, but in F1's modern sustainable era, it wouldn't have lasted anyway. So the FIA tightened up the regulations on where the exhaust could be positioned at the end of 2013, and the blown diffuser was no more. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out our video on the untold story of Christian Horner over this holiday season. There is no excuse, I know you have the time.